Thanks for tuning in. My name is Sareth Ney, and this is Stories on Sunset. And I called it Stories on Sunset because it's SOS. And during these times, we are in SOS. And and I'm trying to save all the venues that have GoFundMes and all that stuff for their employees. Um, and for this one, um, I called it Stories on Sunset because it's on Sunset Strip and Sunset Boulevard. And um, I, from 2009 to 2013, um, I was a concert journalist um, out in LA. And these venues were my safe havens. Um, I was very fortunate to be a concert journalist in Los Angeles. And um, I got to see everyone that I grew up listening to uh, music wise. And um, since I was a concert journalist, I was able to um, uh, get credentials and uh, see all these shows for free. Um, so for the first story um, I'm gonna share with you all is how I got to meet uh, the RZA from the Wu-Tang Clan. And it all started um, uh, during my summer internship um, days uh, back in 2009. And it was at the House of Blues um, on Sunset Strip. It's no longer there. It's more like um, they built apartments on it now. And there were some legendary concerts there. Um, during uh, that time, uh, I was wrapping up my summer internship and I wanted to go to a concert. Um, and it was the Method Man, Red Man and Ghostface Killer Show. And um, it was uh, the last Saturday, I believe it was, of my, the week of my, my summer internship. And so I bought tickets to go to the first show. And um, I was like first in line um, at the House of Blues. And um, the funny thing was, um, the, they thought, uh, the House of Blues thought I was with the Wu-Tang Clan. Um, and the Wu-Tang Clan thought I was part of the, um, the House of Blues. And um, it, was, it was funny. It was, just, it was just me before I became an actual concert journalist. So, um, anywho. This pretty much launched my journalism career because this is what I wanted to do was be in concerts and be involved somehow. So I waited and I wore this Method Man shirt that I have on now and it's really old and it has holes in it. And I went to the first show and I bought some merch and it's like I bought a bunch of Method Man and Red Man shirts and bandanas, like whatever they had, I bought. And the merch man, he goes, uh, that's a really old shirt you have on. And I'm like, you must be a really big fan. You must have seen him a couple times. And I said, I did, mostly in Colorado. And um, that's where I'm from, born and raised. Um, so anywho, um, he goes, do you know they have a second show? And I'm like, yeah, um, but I can't stay because I live like an, hour and a half, like an hour away from this place, like an hour and a half. I lived in Palmdale with my aunt and uncle. They were nice enough to let me stay with them. And um, he goes, well, what if I give you a, a free ticket to the second show? And I'm like, wow, that would be pretty awesome. So um, uh, they go, just wait for me outside, and um, I'll give you a bracelet so you can come back in, and then you'll be all set. I'm like, that's pretty cool. I'll, I'll just do that. And sure enough, we had a conversation about how the people are in New York are, and and he gives me the bracelet and he had to go back to work and sell merch. And I couldn't believe it. So I walked back into the second show. And, and sure enough, he gives me a nod on the way back in. And I got to go and see uh, the second, the late, the late show for Method Man, Red Man, and Ghost Face Killer. And my buddy, Big Stat, was the opening act. And Duo Live was another opening act. And my pal, Big Stat, was um, is from Connecticut. He's a rapper up there. Anyways, we met up on the balcony, and on the balcony was like the VIP section, and I got to go up there. And um, I remembered seeing Cat Williams, the comedian, um, just throwing money off the um, the balcony. And I was like, man, this is, this is pretty cool. And uh, he offered me some Dom Perignon, and since I don't drink, I kindly declined it. And I just 
enjoy the show from the balcony. And um, I thanked Method Man's merch man once again before I left. And I said, you know, thanks for the um, the fun times. And uh, I waited for my car from the valet. And I was like, um, I met this guy. His name's Armel. And he goes, hey, sweet shirt, man. We haven't sold that in years. I'm like, we? He goes, yeah. And um, I'm, he goes, I'm Armel. I'm Jizz's artist. I'm like, really? He goes, yeah. And then he goes, you don't sound like you're from around here. And I'm like, nope, I'm from Colorado. And he goes, what are you doing out here? And I'm like, I'm just doing my summer internship and wrapping it up. This is the final week. Um, and he goes, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm just being the apprentice to Clive Barker. He's did like Hellraiser and Candyman. He goes, oh, I know those movies. And he goes, so my car pulls up from the valet guys. He knocks on my window before I left. And he goes, hey, here's my number. I want, um, text me and, um, I'll, and, um, let's see what we can do. And, um, I'm like, all right. So Hollywood, if you don't know, most of it's just smoke and mirrors. And, um, and I didn't believe him, of course, you know, and, but we text message back and forth, um, uh, that next day, I think I was in Barnes and Noble doing some research or something. And I hear Riz's voice and I'm like, holy crap, this is real. Um, and I couldn't believe my ears. And, um, so, um, he goes, let's arrange some, a meeting. And I'm like, all right, let's meet up on Wednesday. And, um, and so we could, we didn't meet up on Wednesday cause like he, they had something going on. And fortunately, um, Phil and Sarah Stokes, which is, um, the folks that run Clive's website, um, they, they're the ones that forwarded my email to Clive for me to get my summer internship. Um, and he was like, um, we we ended up having lunch together uh, with like two of Clive's former employees and Ashley Lawrence from Hellraiser. And that's when she gave me my name, uh, the meaning to my name, which is pretty awesome. Um, but um, so we ended up rescheduling it for, for Friday, the last Friday of my my stay out in L.A. And um. And sure enough, I was running something over um, to a different place, but I saw I saw Riz's um, in a maroon BMW SUV, and I won't forget it. And um, he was with his assistant, and um, and Armel and his buddy shows up, and I was like, "Holy crap!" I was still in this Method Man shirt that I wore, so that way they wouldn't forget me. And um, they ring the bell. And I opened the door, and I welcomed him in, and it was pretty awesome. Like Riz and I ended up, like me and the whole guy, the whole gang ended up hanging out. Um, and uh, we were in the library, and I was, I just got done organizing all of Clive's comic books, and he was like, um, I told Riz, hey, he should totally check out the W section in this box. And um, he goes, uh, why? He goes, just look for something, and so he did. And um, there was Wu Tang comic books in that comic book box, and he goes respect. And he goes, man, these were like, you know, ancient stuff, um, for the time being. And so I took him on a grand tour of the studio, and um, it was pretty gnarly. Um, there was a painting like downstairs in one of the studios, and it was like a a picture of a person with a pecker hanging out and and um i uh his assistant asked me what it was and he goes that's a pecker you know and it was it's pretty fun um and so uh i was at this um three hours had passed and i was hoping like clive was able to meet rizza and i text messaged him and everything and they didn't end up meeting but it was fun to spend like the, the three hours with him and it's um it's, it was on my it's on the story is on my website and everything it's pretty gnarly and um sadly we had to part ways cuz they had to run or go away and and had to leave but um 
the cool thing was like the next day, um, it was like epicenter. It was like a big old festival, um, rock festival that I had to go to, but Riz had invited me to go. And we talked about the, um, the dirty or the old dirty bastard biography thing. Dirty is what it was called, but I couldn't make it. So I was bummed. Um, so we, t- we took a final picture. He autographed a poster of mine and he left. And that was that. And but before he left, he goes, "Well, I'm not gonna work with Clive if you're not a part of it." And and I was like, "I know." And I had to go back to school and finish. Um. And so um, they left, and I was bummed. And Clive was like, "Um," he, he walks into the library where where I was arranging stuff, his more books in alphabetical order. He says, um, he walks in and he starts crying and I start crying and he goes, and he gives me this big old bear hug. And he goes, I couldn't, um, um, he was on a, an emotional roller coaster. That's why he couldn't meet him. And, um, and I was like, I totally understand. Um, but a, like a couple, like, as I ventured into concert journalism, I ended up reuniting with the RZA at the old key club and um it was part of the sunset strip music festival and i walked i walked to the back of the venue and quentin tarantino was there and that was pretty awesome and um a couple i think another couple months went by and they had like a rock the bells um press conference at the house of blues again where i met RZA again and i remember this time around he was surrounded by like the nation of Islam and it was pretty gnarly. I didn't expect to see those guys, you know, there, I guess they were his bodyguards or something. And, um, I showed him the picture that we took and he goes, I asked him, Hey, do you remember this day? He goes, yeah, absolutely. And, um, he goes, um, I wish, you know, things would have ended different on that day. He goes, don't worry about it. Things will, um, it'll eventually happen. And sure enough, Rizzo was right. Because um, if you watch this movie, um, either you pick up the European version called um, uh, Cabal. I don't know if you can see it. Or if you buy the um, domestic version called um, uh, Nightbreed, the director's cut. Um, you'll see um, in the end credits, um, you have to wait for the original end credits to end. And... Uh, you'll see like the next three screens, and on the third screen is like um the end credits. Um, and right underneath New Beverly Cinema, which is Quentin Tarantino's movie theater out in LA, um, you'll see my name, and there's like a six degrees of separation there. I don't know if there's six completely, but um, and this is how they link up together. How Rizzo promised, um, everything will um, it'll eventually happen. So like Quentin looks up to Clive and he said, to call Clive Barker a um a horror writer is like calling the Beatles a garage band. And Rizzo worked with Quentin as um he did the score for Kill Bill Volume One. Um and uh and then me linking up with Rizza um thanks to Armel um at the House of Blues and bringing up him to uh, bringing up Rizzo and the gang to uh Clive's studio, and then now, um, and that's how, like, that's a, kind of like the six degrees of separation. That's what I like to think. But it's pretty cool to see, like, my name in a movie. Um, that was like my Hollywood dream. And I didn't tell Clive that, but surprisingly, I found my name on a on a YouTube um, interview of Clive's. And when I stumbled upon it accidentally, um, I had to buy the movie once it came out. And um, I was like, "Holy crap! Uh, <clears throat> I'm my name is in a movie. I can I can live on forever in celluloid." And I couldn't believe it. But anywho, um, we're about at the 15 minute mark, and um, there's there's venues um, like um, that are listed below, and the the GoFundMe's and their websites and everything like that uh, can be found um, in the description boxes. Um, for the Quora Zone, um, they're um, just buy movies from their website. Um, 
and watch them from home. Um, they don't have like a, a GoFundMe or anything like that set up. But um, that's how they're raising monies for them. Uh, the Comedy Store, um, they have a, a, a benefit thing on their website. So that's how they're raising money for their staff. Um, and definitely, definitely, definitely uh, help them out. Keep the doors open for them uh, because they were my safe havens out in L.A. And um, and other than Clive Studio. And um, I couldn't have been in a better time uh, and spent um, a good time out there um, just seeing all these bands um, and all these artists for free. But um, I decided instead of, since they're not charging me to get into the door, I'm going to just buy merch and support the bands and the artists that way. And you should see my closet and my um, uh, my walls. There's nothing but concert posters from those days and shirts that I am in endless supply of from like almost every genre of music. And um, I would personally donate to these GoFundMe campaigns and all that stuff, but I don't have the funds for it. So I thought this is like a better way or my way of getting the word out and having folks donate to them uh, because I have to save up money for my own festival called Sareth Fest. And it's happening in July, hopefully. Um, and if that doesn't work, we'll live stream it here on StreamYard. Um, and I decided to leave Stream uh, Powered by StreamYard on top um, because um, they're very, they're not paying me to say this, but it's really easy to use. And they can link to your Facebook and your YouTube. Um, and uh, yeah, if, um, if, if people see this late and they leave comments, I'll come back to it and answer questions that you may have. Um, but, uh, yep, follow us on, look for us on social media, um, and follow us and, um, uh, show your support, um, when they open. I couldn't find anything about the Roxy Theater, um, out in LA, and I have some cool mem memories there. So, um, there was, like, no, nowhere to donate to them. Um, if you want, just, like, snail mail their funds to them or whatever you can. And go catch a live show. Um, always catch a live show. It'd be awesome. Um, I can't wait for this coronavirus and COVID-19, if you want, whatever you want to call it, to be over with. So um, we can support the live venues um, and all that good stuff. And um, I'll stop at 18 minutes because I plan on making a full album with all these audio recordings. And, uh, and we'll uh, see you next week. Um, for the next set, set, uh, Stories on Sunset. And uh, this is my SOS to the world. We'll see you uh, next week.